If you've ever wanted to install KDE software from source code, but felt that maybe it'd be too hard to do or take too long to figure out how to put it all together, then this video series is for you. In this first installment, we're gonna take a look at how to turn a system into one that can install almost any KDE software from source with one command. It's really quite simple. You just follow the steps. All the links we'll be looking at will also be in the description box below. So first we're gonna start with the, the first and pretty much the only decision you're gonna to have to make in this, uh, in this episode. And that is where do you want to install the software that we're going to build? And there's three options really. One is over top of the system packages that are already on your operating system. Um, this isn't great and I really don't recommend it because package updates from your distribution will overwrite it. Um, and if you break anything, well then it's broken and you have nothing to go back to. So let's just pretend that the option doesn't even exist. There's really two good options. One is in your home directory. And this is nice and safe. It doesn't touch your uh, system. So even if you mess something up very, very badly, you still have all of the packages from your operating system there and easy to get to. The drawback is that it's only really usable by that user, or at least easily usable by that user. That may actually be a plus. The other option is to put it somewhere globally. Um, I tend to put all the software that I build from source for the KD, from the KDE community in Opt KDE 4. Um, I also have uh, an Opt KDE 5 for the future stuff that we're building. Um, this allows me to have multiple versions side by side. It doesn't touch the the version of the packages that came with the operating system, which are in USR, so it's safe. And the bonus is all users can immediately have access to it. This is very nice. I often test things with different users, so for me this is important. The downside is it requires root to install. Um, that's not a big minus for most people because most of us have root on our own machines, so not a big problem. So that's where I install it, but both of these options are completely good. It just depends on what you would like to do. So with that small decision out of the way, we're ready to go. First thing we need to do is get our system ready to build. So KDE software uses a lot of different libraries and, and system services that already come with the operating system. And uh, it doesn't reinvent every single wheel. So we need to install these things. And on TechBase, there's a getting started area for build. And there's a warning here that says it's, you know, these pages are being rewritten, which is true, but we don't really care about most of the stuff on here. We're gonna go straight to the platform specific information. And we're gonna go to Linux BSD, and you pick your, pick your poison, as they say. And my poison is OpenSUSE. So I come here, and the only thing we care about here is the required packages section. Everything else we'll ignore again. So to make sure that we have everything needed to build, we're gonna run this command. So whatever the command is for the operating system you're using, we're going to run that in the terminal. And I need to do this as root here. And this is going to install everything I need to be able to build KDE software. Awesome sauce, it's all done. In my case, I already had everything installed. Uh, if, I didn't, if it didn't, it would say, do you want to install it? And then it would install it. So this may take a few minutes, but that's, all that you need to do. So we'll, we'll clear a console again. Step two is a small step, it's a little optional, um, and it has to do with configuring a tool called git. Uh, what is git? Git is a source, uh, or is a revision control management system. Basically, it's how the KDE community and many other communities, including the Linux kernel and many, many others, uh, share source code between themselves and the world. So as KDE contributors work on uh, software and artwork and whatnot, uh, all their changes get sent to a central server that everyone can get to. And the, then everyone can up or pull these updates as they happen, these changes as they happen, and basically get a local copy of it. The tool that uh, is used to make all that sharing magic happen is called Git. So there's a neat page on community.kd.org, uh, which is the Git KDE org manual. And this really tells you all the ins and outs of how to use Git if you want to uh, you know, contribute to KDE and whatnot. We only really care about this one little snippet here. Let Git rewrite your URL prefixes. Um, 
I won't explain right now what it does in, in detail because it's a behind the scenes thing for us and we're not really going to be getting into it, but it will make things easier, particularly in the future uh, for you. So we're just going to grab these four lines. We're going to then open up the git config the dot git config file in our home directory. If you don't have one, just make one. And we're going to paste those four lines in just like that. Simple, simple, simple. Make that a little bit cleaner. Great. And we save. Done. That's step two. Now we're on to the third step. Shockingly, this is the last step. <laughs> so we're going to the KDE source build website. And KDE source build is a tool that's going to automate the building of KDE software for us. This is the only package we're actually going to have to set up manually. And it's kind of neat to do this because we're going to see what KDE source build actually does behind the scenes for us from here on out. So on the homepage, it has a nice little git clone command that we're going to copy and paste into our uh, our console here. Actually, before we do that, um, you also need to pick a place to put all of the, the source code that you're going to be getting. I have an SRC or source directory in my home directory. I'm going to make one in here called KDE. I'm going to go into that directory. Great. I'm going to put all of my KDE source code in here. So git clone. That's just the command from the KDE source build website. It does a bunch of stuff. And at the end of it, I now have a KDE source build directory. And if I go into there, I can see, well, everything that makes up KDE source build. Now I could use it right from here if I wanted. It's just Perl, so there's no actual you know, building of a binary necessary. But I find it a lot more convenient to put it somewhere where every user has access to it, etc. Um, so I'm going to put it where I chosen that opt KDE4 directory earlier. So we're going to come back out to source KDE where the KDE source build directory is. And we're going to make a directory called build. Every time we go to make software, we're going to do it inside this build directory. This will keep the actual process of building the software and all the output it does separate from the source code that we start from. And this keeps everything clean and neat and tidy, much easier to manage in the long run. So inside this build directory, I'm going to make KD source build directory, go into KD source build. And now I'm going to run a little command called CMake. CMake is a tool that is uh, used throughout KDE software to set up build systems. So all the descriptions for how to build it are actually already in the KDE source build source directory. And we just need to point CMake to it. So we do CMake um, and the path to the KDE source build. In fact, we can make it a little bit more explicit where it is. So it's easy to see that we're actually at this source build. Great. Um, and then one little piece of magic, and that's dash D CMake underscore underscore install underscore prefix equals and then where we want it to install. In this case, opt KDE4. I hit enter. I wait for a few seconds. Do, 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 do. Done. And now inside of this directory, the build directory, I have all of these files. I don't really care what they are. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to make, I'm going to do a J8, which tells it to spawn eight threads for the make up to, and it sits there and it's done. Now it's built. Now, because I'm wanting to install to opt, which is um, a system-wide directory, I have to use root. So I use sudo on my system. So I'm going to do sudo make install. If you're doing it into your home directory, uh, such as you know your home uh, forward slash KDE or whatever, uh, or forward slash bin, um, you just do make install as your user. You don't have to do anything else. But I'm going to do sudo make install. And we can actually see it's installing a bunch of stuff to opt KDE4. Cool. We are almost done. There's one last thing we need to do, and that is actually set up KDE source build. There is a configuration file, but there's also a setup tool. You run this from your console. Um, we don't want to see a tutorial. Now, do I already have access or commit access to the KDE repositories? Basically, this means that if I make changes, am I allowed to upload them to the central KDE server and make it part of a future KDE release? Um, I'm going to assume that we don't, so we'll say no. 
you can get this uh, that access and actually be showing in a later episode how to do that. So we'll say no for now. We don't use an HTTP proxy. And now again, we're, we're presented with this choice we made earlier. Do we want to install the software into our home? And that's actually the default. Or we can say custom, and I want to do a custom. And I want to put it in opt KDE4, voila. Next, it asks us which major module groups do you want to build? Qt, Base Libs, Workspace, that's all the Plasma stuff. Base Libs is the KDE libraries. Base, uh, that's things like Dolphin and Console. Uh, PIM, it's Contact and all of the applications that go with it um, and Akhenati and all of that stuff. Now, you're not limited to this. It's just going to set these things up for you by default. And anything that you have starred, if you just run KDE source build with no uh, with no options after it, it will build all of this stuff for you. All of it. <laughs> so it's pretty powerful. And this is fine. Usually you can just go, okay. And you can always change this later. Really easy to do that. You can either rerun this, the uh, setup script or a setup uh, application, uh, or you can go in and, and, and hand edit the config file. So how many CPU cores? Two is fine. Um, and it's generated. And it actually shows you exactly where it has generated the config file, which is in home.kdsource-buildrc. Okay, and and just out of curiosity, let, let's go take a look and see what it looks like here. So here it is, it tells me where I'm going to install it to, where my uh, source directory is, and that's not quite right, is it? So I'm going to change this to source KDE, that's where I want it anyways. Um, if you leave it to where it was as KDE source, it would put it in there automatically for you and create the directory. So directory to build KDE into before installing. Yeah, build, this is fine. Great, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. And as you can see, you come down, there's a bunch of stuff about modules and all this, and we can learn about this later. But for now, we're done. I save that and we're good. And that's it. You can now build virtually any piece of KDE software from the command line with one command. And we'll look a, in a little bit in detail how to do that in the next installment. So if you got this far, congratulations. You are ready to go. See you in the next episode.